For part 4 on our tutorials on creating threaded features in SOLIDWORKS, I'm now going to show you how to create a true helical cut sweep to represent an ACME thread. I have a representative part here which has a thread blank region with a major diameter of two and a half inches. We'd like to create a four pitch ACME thread that will cut along that blank region using a true helix. To begin, we'll create a sketch on the end of the part. When we use the helix curve feature, we always need to begin with a sketch of a circle. For convenience, I will have that circle uh, be the diameter uh, that is equal to the major diameter of the part. Rather than resketching the circle, I'll just pick on the edge representing the major diameter and use the SOLIDWORKS convert entities sketch command. If you haven't used convert entities before, basically it just projects the selected edge into your sketch plane as if you had drawn that entity yourself. So now I have a circle that is equal and constrained to the major diameter of the part, which is great because if the major diameter changes, this sketch diameter will also change. With this sketch drawn now, we do not have to exit the sketch mode to go right to the helix command. You can find the helix command under insert curve helix. If you use that command a lot, you may consider adding a toolbar icon to your command manager. In the helix property manager, we first need to specify how we're defining the helix. We'll need a combination of two of the three parameters, the pitch, the revolution or the number of turns, and the height or the length of the helix. In this case, I'm going to specify height and pitch. We can either use the on-screen callouts or the fields in the property manager to enter the various fields for height, pitch, and so on. We can specify a constant or variable pitch. For the height, we'll notice first off that we need to reverse the direction. I can either key in the height or I can use the on-screen handles to dynamically edit the length. And we just need to drag this out sufficiently so that the helix exits our thread blank region. For the pitch, we would enter in for a 4 pitch, 1 divided by 4, or 0.25. The start angle is very important. This determines where the helix starts and would then determine the sketch plane that we will use to attach our profile. I would recommend picking a value and staying consistent with this on the various thread features that you create. That way your thread features will, will stay consistent and they can be more uh, used more robustly. I'm going to choose a value of 90 degrees here, which corresponds with the XY plane or the front plane. This means that my helix will terminate right at the inter uh, intersection of the front plane. You'll notice an option to taper the helix if desired. We'll leave that off for the time being. When I accept that, you'll notice that a new helix curve command is created in the feature manager tree. By clicking on that feature, you can see the various dimensions, such as the length, pitch, start angle, and number of turns. These can be edited on screen just by double clicking. The next step is to attach a profile to the end of our helix that will then be used as a, a cut sweep profile. Let's orient the model in the front plane and zoom into this area here. This is exactly the position where we'd like to attach our thread profile. I have some profiles stored as sketch blocks in my design library. Review lesson one if you're still not comfortable with using sketch blocks find the appropriate profile, drag and drop into the area on screen. Since I oriented the model in the front view, this sketch block will be dropped onto the front plane. I'm now placed in block insert mode where I can move my mouse around and hover over various entities and snap that block in place. The insertion point is, uh, for the block is specified when you create the block. In my case, I specified it at the point that you see here at the, uh, v the top end of this vertical center line. If I just move closely to this helix, SOLIDWORKS will snap that right into place. Hit escape to exit the block insert mode. 
and exit the sketch. We now have a helix curve and a sketch profile. All we need to do now is use the swept cut command. I have an icon on my command manager for the swept cut. If you don't, you can find it simply by going to insert, cut, sweep. In the cut sweep dialog we need to specify our profile and our path. The profile will be the sketch block and the path is the helix. We'll get a nice visual preview of this if SolidWorks is able to create the geometry. If everything looks good, a simple right mouse click will OK that command. And it will take a few extra seconds for this feature to rebuild due to the complexity. And we can now see the helical cut feature in the form of this cut sweep has been created for us. Let's go to the Appearances tab and find a nice colored uh, painted texture to apply. Drag that and drop it onto the cut sweep feature in the Feature Manager tree for a nice visual effect. As I showed in the previous video, we can create a section view here in the front plane and save that as a drawing annotation view. Now we can create a drawing from this part, pick the desired template, and right from our drawing palette, specify the parent view and the section view. Detail views can also be inserted very quickly and easily so that we can get a close-up of our thread profile. Here we have a great looking 2D cross-section of that actual 3D geometry. And that's how you can create a 3D helical cut to represent a thread in SOLIDWORKS.